people think, oh, it must cost a lot to, to uh, run your greenhouse. Well, you think about it, we're using, what, nine months a year, we're using natural ventilation. Because I have a ridge vent up there that opens. So there's a ridge vent at the top of my A-frame that opens up, and it's like a chimney. It lets you know, the cold air in, the hot air out. So it's like a chimney. It, you know, it circulates. So nine months out of the year, I just used Mother Nature. The other times of the year, that's when I'm pulling the water through the, the big wet wall. It's like a big swamp cooler. I have a pump over there, but that's about it. Just one single pump. Then I have four big exhaust fans and then a, a motor to open my ridge vent. So I'm not consuming a lot of energy. When I built this facility, my pharmacy, which is the building in the center, I run clean rooms in there and we consume a lot of power. So my monthly bill was, gosh, $3,400 to $3,800 a month. And that's just for a 5,000 square foot facility. So I went and built this greenhouse, which is 5,000 square feet, plus the learning center over there, which is another 1,300 square feet. So now we're at about 11,300 square feet. I put, a, what, uh, 100 solar panels on my roof. And now my bill is $21 to $2,400 a month. So essentially, I'm running this facility on solar power. Talk about free energy. And I have plans to add another 50 to 100 panels on the roof as I need it. So it's very energy efficient. Even the pumps in this tower only draw 58 watts. 58 watts, that's nothing. Those pumps run three minutes on, 12 minutes off. So we don't consume a lot of power. Can you imagine if I had to use air conditioning to, to keep this cool? The cost, it would be prohibitive. There is no way I'd be able to make any money if I was having to air conditioner, air condition this facility in the middle of the summertime when it's 120 out. So we're using all the free sun, natural sunlight as well. I don't use any grow lights in here whatsoever. Since I'm located in Arizona, I get all this free natural sun and I don't have to pay for power to grow my plants. I mean, it's just incredible what God has provided me here in Arizona. I am so fortunate. Now, if you lived in Antarctica or Alaska, you know, different parts of the world, yes, we have to use some, uh, some ancillary power, some auxiliary power for lighting. But here in Arizona and, and those places in the desert, you guys have so much sun, you'll never need any type of grow lights. It's free. It's absolutely free. So again, the power consumption is com nothing compared to traditional farming. You know, I still have cousins that are farmers in Minnesota, and they send me pictures all the time of their new equipment. You know, they sent some pictures showing me uh, their new tractor that's, what, um, two million dollars? And it plows or fills, does everything without a driver. I can build a lot of greenhouses for two million dollars, a lot of urban farms. It's really exciting. What's interesting now, we're inside our greenhouse, and the microfogging system just kicked on. So here it's automated, and that's set to kick on at 80 degrees. So now we can feel it. You can see the microfogging system kicking on. And I'm standing here and I'm not getting wet because it's microfogging. It's designed to help drop the temperature another 20 to 25 degrees. So again, things stay automated, keep it simple. This is technology that's been around for decades. This isn't new. We're just incorporating it, incorporating it into this vertical farming that we're doing. Why not? Why not take technology that's tried and true, utilize it to the max, and be successful growing in the desert like we are, or even in, in the Midwest or in you know, Alaska. We can use the same technology all over the world. And that's why we built this prototype almost 10 years ago. We built this to show you can do this even in the hot desert climate. So some people say, well, what about you know, in Minnesota? You know, I'm being approached as we look at how We've seen the cold front push down more. We're seeing where across the Midwest, farmers are seeing that it's staying colder longer, you know, starting sooner and staying colder longer. Well, they're trying to figure out how to grow crops. Even now, they're, they're racing to get those crops in. They hope they don't get too much water or they hope they get some rain at all. And in their, or, you know, they, or they don't get enough rain and so their crops dry out. It's really interesting to see what they're going through. So a lot of my urban uh, farmers in the city are going to greenhouses, but now we're starting to see these farmers in the Midwest, all through that belt, that whole farming belt through the, the country, the United States, 
they're looking at ways how they can actually utilize their, their farmland year round, not just for those four to six months, seven months that they race to get their crops in. Because on those months that they're not able to do anything, they don't make any money. So this greenhouse is a prime thing they can use. So in the Midwest, where we have a lot more cold temperatures, we actually put radiant heat in the floor. Not only do we paint it white to get all this reflection, but we get radiant heat. So when you look at it, we have 20 gallons of water in this reservoir. So this reservoir is actually help, helping to either heat or cool this greenhouse too. If you think about it, you've got 20 gallons in this reservoir. It takes on the ambient temperature of your environment, which typically happens by one, two o'clock in the afternoon. So that can either help heat up or cool down your greenhouse. So in the Midwest, if we put radiant heat in the floor, that helps warm this reservoir water up to 70 to 80 degrees, which then helps maintain this uh, leafy green or whatever I'm growing in my tower to keep growing even when it's cold, even if the temperature was only 60 to 70 degrees in there that reservoir, that water is helping maintain that plant, keeping it alive. Really intriguing. Just like here in Arizona, this water will cool down at night to the ambient temperature. So say it cools down to 60, 50 to 60 degrees. Well, then that'll help keep that tower cool during the daytime. So the key is you cool your towers down at night, that water cools down, and that allow you to grow even when it's 110, 20 degrees out. Or just the opposite, it heats it up and allows you to grow when it's 20, 30 degrees outside. So again, you can build your greenhouse so it, it allows you to grow year round. Our farmers from the Midwest are trying to figure out how to do this because they see that this climate change is happening. They're experiencing it and it's been going on. You know, it's a cycle that they're going through. So they're trying to figure out how to maximize their profits, stay in business, some of them. So we're excited to bring this technology, not only to the farmers in the Midwest, but all over the world. We have people inquiring how to feed their countries. You name the country, they're contacting us and they're trying to figure out a way to do what we're doing here in Arizona. Since we have this prototype, it's great. They can come here, they can do training, we can actually give them hands-on, and then we can assist them in developing the best greenhouse for their environment. So in the Midwest, yes, we'd have to give them some grow lights. That's when we start using those high-pressure sodium lights they draw a lot more power, but they also generate a lot of heat, which then helps heat up your environment. So you're using something as a, as a benefit, as a side effect of those lights. So again, it's a, it's a great way to couple these energy features in a, in a greenhouse anywhere in the world. And that's what we're trying to do with you. We're trying to figure out what's the best way we can bring this technology to you. We'll assist you in building greenhouses, uh, especially on a massive size like this, this is one ninth of an acre. So this is 5,000 square feet. Doesn't sound like very much, does it? Well, if we're growing horizontal, this would easily take one acre. So we can easily grow 10 times more vertically than horizontally. Some people extract, extrapolate and say they can grow 100 times more. Well, it depends. You know, if you only are, uh, are able to grow, gosh, five months out of the year, six months out of the year, and you have a greenhouse, now you can grow 12 months out of the year, you just doubled your growing capacity times six months. So that would be like 60 times more per year. I mean, so again, again, it comes down to where do you live, where are you trying to put your, your urban farm or even your farm that's in an agricultural uh, area. So we're excited to bring this technology to you. And this greenhouse is just loaded with things that have been around forever. This is not new technology. It's bringing it together working for you so that way you can maximize growing your own, your own food year round. That's what it's about. We all want to grow our own food so we know what's being sprayed on it. We know there's no harsh chemicals. We know that we're not wasting energy. This greenhouse is very, very energy efficient. You know, to drop my, my bill from $3,800 a month down to $2,100 a month, that's incredible savings. My goal is to make it net zero, so I'm gonna put more solar panels on there, and I'm gonna keep dropping that because solar panels now are twice the, efficient, twice the efficiency of what I have up there. So I can just replace those panels and throw more up there. I'm gonna get close to net zero here when it comes to my energy consumption. And that's my plan of action is to be green. We all wanna be green.
So when you think about it, here I'm growing food that goes right from my tower to your table. That bypasses you know, all the different hands. On average, food is handled by 14 different pairs of hands. Can you imagine that? 14 different pairs. Well, if you're growing it on your tower, you have one pair that's, that has planted it, then you have another pair that's actually harvesting it. You know, this beautiful head of lettuce here, mirror, this is a beautiful heat retolerant, uh, heat tolerant lettuce, and it goes right from your tower to your table. Can you imagine that? There's no plastics involved. There's no vehicles that are using gas. I mean, you look at all these tractors in the field that have to come in and harvest it. None of that's occurring. So you look at your own carbon footprint, it is minimized. Talk about saving the environment. Growing your own food is the way to go, people.